ceremony, holiday. That's why you have things like the eggs and the bunnies. And uh, it was basically after Constantine decided to Christianize the empire. So it goes back to Constantine. Remember, he Christianized all the pagan holidays and all the uh, pagan traditions. So are you familiar with tarot cards, tarot reading? So this is uh, Ostara. This is the fertility tarot card. What does she have there next to her? Eggs and bunnies. Eggs and bunnies. And it says, tarotology is the theoretical basis for reading of tarot cards, which is the practice of using cards to gain insight. So we are called to go to God if we want answers, right? We are to go to God if we need anything. So this is to go to the cards, right? Using the cards. And it says, the result, and I'm reading the highlighted part, the result is guided by a spiritual force. So this is something that the Bible teaches us that we are not to dabble into spirituality, right? Read this book, uh, A Trip into the Supernatural, and you will see um, how dangerous it can be. So the origin of the Easter Bunny, and it always starts in pagan times. In pagan, right? Just like with children with their book, Once Upon a Time, if you go to these holidays, it always starts in pagan times. Easter was, um, it was fertility. I, I will just leave it at that. So then you have the eggs. No Easter without eggs. Um, they believe the world began as an egg. Um, egg. Eggs are the beginning of life. You know, spring represents the beginning of a, of a you know, everything comes to life after winter. So... And what, what do they usually eat at Easter? Yeah. Oh, right? So this is another one of those things like Jesus turning the water to wine. They're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ by eating something that Jesus would never touch, right? He would never touch. I mean, the Bible says you shall not eat any abominable thing. So the Bible is clear about certain foods that we are to eat and not eat. But this holiday celebrates that uh, on the table, right? And then let's talk about this sunrise service. This is unique to Easter. Everybody at the church gets up when the sun comes up to have worship, right? And the Bible talked about this. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple um, of the Lord and their faces toward the east. W where does the sun rise? In the east, right? So they're facing where the sun rises and they worship the sun towards the east. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit <clears throat> the abomination what they commit here? So is it a light thing to God that we worship the same way that the pagans worship? It is not a light thing. It's very important that we worship God the way He wants us to worship Him. All right. Now, some of you may know this. The word Easter does appear in the King James Bible in Acts 12.4. And it says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, delivered him to four uh, quaternions of soldiers to keep him attending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So this could be very confusing. But what I discovered is Easter is a mistranslation found in King James. The majority of the virgins have Passover. And in fact, the Greek word is to Pasha, meaning the Passover. So the word Easter should not be there. It should be the word Passover. And we know that Jesus was crucified during the Passover, which happened in the springtime. So let's look at this. This is the pagan holiday wheel. Here we have Yule. That's what the pagans call this winter festival time. That's why the Christmas tree is really the Yule tree. So if you go around the wheel, you could see that we just 
brought all this stuff into our church. We brought all these pagan things into our, into our church. Jeremiah 10, 2, 3. Thus said the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. So, the, the Lord is encouraging us, right? Do not learn the way of the heathen. Stay away. We have our own customs. The Christian culture is a beautiful culture of health and worship, of music. Our culture will sustain you through your life here. Put aside the, the customs and cultures of the world. Do not even learn them. Colossians 2.8 See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elements, elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. So we drew a line in the sand, but the world is trying to pull us over that line. Every day we're being pulled over that line, but we have to be firm. We have to be a thus saith the Lord kind of people. In heavenly places says, and this kind of goes to the root of, of human nature. The natural stubbornness of the human heart resists the light of truth. Its natural pride of opinion leads to independence of judgment and a clinging to human ideas and philosophy. The Lord would have those who understand the reasons of their, uh, for their faith rest in their belief of that which they have been convinced is truth and not be turned from the faith by the presentation of human sophistries. So Satan is sophisticated in trying to deceive us. In these last days, we need a large and increasing faith. And that's why, uh, you know, it's important for us to draw nearer to the Word of God, not a half-hearted effort. These things I have spoken unto you that we might have peace in the world, ye have, have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know what? Standing firm in the faith, we're going to have tribulation. It's going to be trouble for us. It'll be difficult for us. But Jesus is telling us, be of what? Good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want to look at Enoch, and then I'll close. Genesis 5.24, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. So Enoch was translated from this earth before he died. It says here, Enoch had temptations as well as we. He was surrounded with society no more friendly to righteousness than uh, is that which surrounds us. So let's not think that Enoch had it easy. It says here, his time was just as difficult as us. The atmosphere he breathed was tainted with sin and corruption, the same as ours, yet he lived a life of holiness. He was unsullied with the prevailing sins of the age. And what are the sins of the age? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These are the sins of the age. From Genesis to Revelation, these are the sins of the age. And these are the sins that Satan uh, uses to tempt us. Enoch walked with God 300 years previous to his translation to heaven. And the state of the world was not uh, then more favorable for the perfection of Christian character than it is today. And how did Enoch walk with God? Now this is important for us to have success. I can't just say, hey, be successful, have a good night. I have to tell you how to be successful. And it says here, he educated his mind and heart to ever feel that he was in the presence of God. So we have to learn that God is always with us. And when in perplexity, his prayers would ascend to God to keep him. He refused to take any course that would offend his God. Now, when I hear that, I think back to the Daniel seminar again, right? Because there was a situation where Daniel and his friends were in Babylon, right? The, the seat of all paganism. Daniel and his friends were found there. But what did Daniel do? 
Daniel purposed in his heart he would not defile himself. So he refused to cross that line. He refused. And whatever happened, happened. But he refused to defile himself. That sounds like what happened to Enoch. He refused to be led astray. He would pray, and this is important. As much as studying the Word of God is important, praying is just as important. Daniel prayed three times a day. We must do likewise. He prayed, teach me thy way that I, that I might not err. What is thy pleasure concerning me? Don't pray concerning your neighbor, your wife, your friend. Pray for yourself. God, what do you need from me, right? Thus, he was constantly shaping his way and course in accordance with God's commandments. And he had perfect confidence and trust in the Heavenly Father that he would help him. That's what we need. And it goes on to say here, and this is important for us because this is last day, end day event stuff. It says, now Enoch was a representative of those who will be upon the earth when Christ shall come. I firmly believe all of us in this room will be alive when Jesus comes again. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians 4.18, it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What are these words? They're the words of Jesus' return. We must comfort one another that we're doing it not for earthly benefit or earthly gain, but for heavenly. Jesus is coming again. He is coming. We must comfort one another with the words of Jesus' second coming. Let's, let's go back to this quote. As a Christian, if you can't fight and you can't flee, flow. Can you fight God? No. You can't fight against His ways. Can you run away? No. Now I'm talking if you want salvation here, right? You, you can't run from Him. Just flow. Just find out what the Word of God says. Follow it. Be obedient. Just go with it. It may seem strange what you have to eat and what, what, how you have to dress and what you have to do. Just flow. It's part of our culture, our Christian culture. It's who we are. Upward Look, a devotional that I read, it said the true Christian keeps the windows of the soul open heavenward. He lives in fellowship with Christ. His will is conformed to the will of God. Shall we not, in the few days of probation that remain, act like men and women seeking for life in the kingdom of God, even in eternity? We must act like adults. We must grow up. Put aside all this silly holiday, fun, festive stuff that Satan throws at us. This is one of the verses that also changed me as a, as a secular person. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Let's put away the childish things of this world. Let's put away all the deception and all the things that God, uh, Satan is putting for us and be people of the word. All right, why don't we sing our final song and then I'll pray. It's 290. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Do you want this? No, I, I got this one.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, for your Son who came and died for us. Lord, we pray that you can keep us, that you can continue to lead and guide us and bring us out of darkness into light. Let us live for you in truth, and we know one day we will be found worthy to enter your kingdom. Continue to bless. Bless us on this Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, amen.